Okay, so you're going to look at the video title and you're going to say, why are you doing Paul Seawald, Chris? You've been going backwards. Certainly Paul Seawald isn't next on the list of uh, war. He's not. But I'm doing it for two reasons. Number one, the most important reason is that he's fresh on the mind for me. I just saw this dude close out game seven of the NLCS last night. And he's going to the World Series. Paul Seawald will be pitching in the World Series. Pitching save opportunities, high leverage situations in the World Series. And that is so cool. So cool. Wish it wasn't for this team. It was it was for a different team. But it's very cool. And number two, I'm being a little petty. I'm being a little petty. You guys uh, on the old tweet box or whatever the heck they call it now, we're talking about, I'm tired of the negative. I don't want to talk about these players that had negative war. Okay. Let's talk about Paul Seawald then. Sorry. Before we get into his numbers, before we get into the savant, all the good stuff that Paul Seawald provided, all the frustrations I have with that trade, Let's talk about Simply Seattle, because Simply Seattle has the very best in Seattle sports gear. Whether you're a fan of the Mariners, the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Sounders, the Storm, whoever, you're going to find the very best stuff from simplyseattle.com. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, anything you could possibly be looking for, you can find at simplyseattle.com. Once you find all that good stuff at checkout, use code MOLLYWAP15. That's M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5, and you will save 15% off of your order it's an awesome deal hey we're not that far away from christmas man get that christmas shopping done early and save 15 percent off your order with code mollywop 15 just go to www.simplyseattle.com all right so what were paul seawald's numbers in 2023 well with the mariners he appeared in 45 games he had a 2.93 era He had a 60 to 14 strikeout to walk ratio, and he saved 21 games. Of course, as you probably know, it'd be weird if you didn't, but just in case, I'll bring it up. Uh, He wasn't a Mariner to finish the season. He was traded at the deadline to the Arizona Diamondbacks in return for Josh Rojas, a Dominic Conzone, and Ryan Burles. With the Diamondbacks, an ERA of 3.57, a little bit of command issues over 17 and two-third innings, uh, 20 strikeouts, great, 10 walks, not so great. And he saved 13 games, and he has been absolutely lights out in the postseason. I'm just checking to see if they have the postseason stats here on the baseball reference page. They sure do. Um, He has appeared in four, six, eight games, and has not a lot of run. That's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. Um, Yeah. Yep, good for Paul Seawald. Good for Paul Seawald. And then let's just show you how dominant he was, really, in 2023. The metrics love this guy, and I understand why. It's, It's easy to understand why. Wasn't quite the 2021 season where he struck out 104 dudes in 64 and two-thirds innings, but I think it was better in 2002, even though his ERA goes up from 2.67 to 3.12. I think he had a better season. Uh, 80 strikeouts compared to 72. uh, More strikeouts and fewer innings. That's pretty good. Just had a little more command issues, but listen to all of the things this dude ranked in the 90th percentile or better. Expected ERA. Expected batting average, average exit velocity, strikeout percentage, and hard hit percentage. And he was also well above average in whiff percentage and barrel, avoiding barrels. The only thing he didn't do great in, well, there are three things he didn't do great. The only thing he did poorly is if you need a double play, Paul Seawald ain't your guy. Eighth percentile in ground ball percentage at 32.6. If you make contact off him, Ball's going to be in the air. Struggled with walk rate. 32nd percentile isn't great. And for a guy who has that wipeout slider, it's a little surprising that his chase rate is only in the 46th percentile. Not abhorrent, but 
He expects a little better. But he was awesome. And I don't think we give Paul Seawald enough credit for what he did for the Mariners, not just in 2021 and 2022, of course. But without him, that 2023 bullpen might have been in some big old trouble. We didn't get the same Andre Munoz this year. We'll talk a lot about it. Matt Brash, for all intents and purposes, was a rookie. That was his rookie season. You can tell me all you want about how he exhausted eligibility in 2022. That's fine. This was his first full season. His first full season of pitching out of a bullpen, for sure. And he, you know, we'll talk about it. A lot of great, some bad. You didn't know what you were going to get from Gabe Spire. You didn't know what you were going to get from Justin Topa. You didn't know what you were going to get from Taylor Sassetto, Trevor Gott. You weren't necessarily sure what you were going to get from these guys. So to say he was a stabilizing force for that bullpen, that's quite the understatement. And if you take a look at his war of one, that's not even close to indicative of how important Paul Seawald was. And there's also this. Now, do I know Paul Seawald well? No, not even a little bit. What I do know is that everyone I've talked to just glows about the dude. And he's an awesome guy. That he's a tough competitor, but that he's a great teammate. And losing a guy like that, it's tough. That is tough. And as I've said many times, and I'll, again, I will talk about, I won't talk about Bliss because he didn't make his debut. But as I said many a time with uh, Kinzone and Rojas, if the Mariners would have made this trade on November 1st, 2023, I would have applauded it. If they would have made this trade November 1st, 2022, I still think I would have applauded it. Be a little different. You would have to pick Bliss as a, um, it's so funny saying the word Bliss like that, uh, but you would have to trade Bliss with a different prospect ranking type of guy. I hope that makes sense. I think you know what I'm saying, because Ryan Bliss was not the same prospect coming into the year that he is now, but I would have applauded it. That trade at that time, I, I will always hate. It is not. It is not Captain Hindsight. It is not anything along those lines whatsoever. I said it many a time, and I, I don't want to be right. All I care about is winning a World Series for this town and for my grandma. That's all I care about. But it didn't work out. The value that you got from Canzone and from Rojas in August, don't make up for what Seawald could have given you in September. And, again, the idea that this was the only way they could have upgraded at second base and right field or left field or whatever you want to call it is 100% laughable. Beyond laughable. I'm going to miss Paul Seawald. I would love to see Paul Seawald back in Seattle someday. Because he's fantastic. He's only 33. There's no reason to think that he's slowing down. No, maybe not the same pitcher he was two years ago as where he was legitimately one of the very, very, very best relievers in baseball. He's pretty darn good. He's pretty darn good, and I have questions about the Mariners' bullpen. I have no doubt about the Mariner bullpen talent. But I have some question marks about how good they'll be again in 2024. Now, Munoz and Brash take huge steps up. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But let me just close with this. 
nothing would make me happier than seeing Paul Seawald win a World Series. Nothing. You know that's not true. I want to see the Seattle Mariners win a World Series. But I would be pleased as punch to see Paul Seawald come home with a ring because he deserves it. He deserves it and then some. Good for you, Paul. And I really hope Canzone and Rojas and especially Bliss make this a trade that we remember at least somewhat fondly. And hey, I'll remember it fondly too for Paul Seawald if he gets to take home a ring. At the very least, he got to take home an NLCS. By the way, the Mariners are now one of five franchises with the Diamondbacks. Uh, This is from my good buddy Softy, uh, the stat. Uh, With the Diamondbacks making their second World Series, the Mariners are one of five franchises that have not been to the World Series twice. They are one of one franchises that has never been. How's that for happy? Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I, I get that you didn't love having the, the negative stuff all in a row. But uh, be nice. Be nice. On that note, please hit like and subscribe. <laughs> love you all. Go get a ring, Paul. <laughs>